Hey everyone, Miss Klein here, and I am going to review activity 1.4, Crush the Bug. And today we're learning to find bugs in computer programs, and a bug is just a mistake, but there's a little bit of history to the why they chose that word, and we'll go over that as well. Computer programs don't always do what you want them to do. When the outcome or event that's supposed to happen doesn't happen the way you think it should, you should start looking for a bug. Let's look at a buggy program to see whether you can help debug it. So as always, there is our, our student built guide that, that will help you on every page in your notebook. And then you open your own set of your own digital notebook, Google Slides down here in the Google assignments, find your name and open up your slides. So we're going to go into the 1.4 lesson. So just like all the books, they're just a set of Google Slides and we're gonna open up activity 1.4 if you've logged in and saved your password, it'll open right up. And in this lesson, what we want to do is Ms. Kind would like you to read about the story about Dr. Grace Harper and the first computer bug. So in September 1947, United States Navy Rear Admiral Grace Hopper was working on the Mark II computer in a research lab when something went wrong. So here is our first computer bug. It's a real bug. Yes, a bug, a real physical bug in a computer, especially back then when they were very, very large machines with lots of vacuum tubes and tapes and things like that. It was easy to get a bug to mess up the, the uh, system, but the, the word really means an error in the code. It's not really a physical bug, but this is uh, in honor of the first real bug in a computer, they named a computer prop, uh, problem a bug. So I want you to read this on your own. It's, it's nice reading, it gives you a little history. And the amazing uh, Dr. Grace Hopper is one of the pioneers of um, computer science and um, building actual computer compilers, what we use to do our programming. So in this lesson, we're gonna find a bug and you can see we're looking at this piece of code. And when we press button A, we, we, we start a loop, a while loop and it's going to turn on the LED light, and then it's gonna pause. After that while loop, then you get a clear screen. So if you look at this, you can see it's not flashing. It's not flashing on and off because it's the repeating loop is just a light and then a pause. So it turns on the LED and then it pauses. So we that's not what we want it to do. So we're gonna write down our information in something called a code chart. And this helps us analyze this. So we would put the code that we're looking at here. We would put a copy of that there. And you can take a screenshot of that for your code chart in a minute. And then the outcome is that it only shows the solid LED. And then you're going to say, is this correct? And you're going to say no. So now we're going to debug it. If you're debugging, you can add a comment. It's called a comment. And you can add a comment and explain. And it'll show a little bit, a little tiny icon right here that there's a comment available. And it says, this should be a loop of a blinking LED. And since this is not working, we know it's buggy. So to make this group of code actually blink, we need to take the clear screen block and put it inside the while loop. So it'll blink and then it'll clear and it'll loop and it'll work continually. So once you press A, it'll forever go in a loop like that. So now this is the correct code. So you're gonna take a screenshot of this as well and we're gonna put it in our notebook because we learned how to debug it. So we're looking at, this is called a code tracing chart and so the first block of code that you took a screenshot from Project Lead the Way is wrong. Button A press, LED stays on and stops. Is this correct? No. And in this one, when we press button A, when we fix the code, button A press, LED blinks on and off. Is this in the outcome? That's what the code looks like. This is the outcome. Is this correct? Yes. So everything in red in your notebook is what Ms. Klein would like you to put in your notebook. So we have fixed the code. When we, Ms. Klein asked you two questions. 
what should the LED be doing? The LED should be flashing on and off. How can you make the LED work correctly? Put the clear screen block inside the while loop so that the LED flashes on and off. So you can see there the LED, then a pause, then it clears, and then it repeats. LED, pause, clear, so that it's gonna look like it's blinking on and off. So that's how you do a code tracing chart. Now the next section are your vocabulary words. And as always, Ms. Kine has a link back to the lesson so you can get your vocabulary words. So click on that link. Remember, if you mouse over that, then the link shows below it in Google Slides. So our first word is code trace chart. Now a way to find something, if you hold down the control F, you can write the word code trace chart and it'll come right up. That's, that's using the find keyboard shortcut. And we'll click on that, highlight that, copy it, because we're looking at the words like a grown up would. We're not writing sentences. Writing sentences is a great idea, but this one, I just want you to get used to looking up words that you don't know and, and looking what they mean while you're doing your reading. If I hold down, if I just control V, it's going to be too small. If I hold down shift control V, it'll, it'll print it in the, um, uh, the font that I already have in my document. So it's a better way to do that. So then we're going to go to bug. And remember, control F, type the word bug. And it'll take you to the word bug. So the first time we saw bug, it probably has the definition of it. So we'll go. There, there's the word bug. We're getting used to looking up words like uh, grown up wood while they're doing their reading. Shift control V. And then our next word debug. Going to highlight it, control C, and then shift control V, for identifying bugs or errors in the computer. A bug is a flaw in the computer program. So the next word we want is anomaly. There's anomaly. Something unexpected that happens while the program is running, control C. Oops, this guy forgot her shift. Shift control V. And then the word compiler, that's what we learned about with Dr. Grace Harper. A compiler is a program that translates instructions or code into a language that can be read and understood by a computer. So basically when, when we use make code, we're using it to translate our ideas into something the computer can understand. So we're done with our vocabulary, we learned five new words. Now we're going to do the main part of this exercise, and that is to debug one program. Ms. Klein is going to choose the program called Dragonflies, and you'll notice this right here says hex. That's the type of file that runs in the MakeCode microbit emulator or compiler. So you click here to go to those programs. Again, it's opening up Project Lead the Way. You could choose any program you want, but Ms. Klein is going with Dragonflies. You could do all of them. If you finish early, I encourage you to debug another program. It's really interesting learning how to solve a problem. So we're going to, with a Mac and a PC, we hold on the control key, but with a Chromebook, that won't work. You need to hold down the alt key. So you click on the code. So alt click, and you're gonna open it in a new tab. And you'll notice that it downloaded, I'll put my little spotlight on right now. You'll notice that it downloaded that file Dragonflies for you. So once again, hold down the Alt key on a Chromebook, open the link in a new tab, and it'll download it for you. And it's ready to be used in the Make Code programming environment. So we go back to our slides. We've downloaded the code. We learned how to do it. We're going to import it now into MakeCode Microbit Emulator. So we're going to open up MakeCode. And instead of starting a new project, this time we're going to import our code. We're going to click Import, Import a File, choose the file we downloaded. We're going to look in our downloads or recent or some other location, and we're going to find the Dragonflies. 
and then you're going to open it and then you're going to click go ahead and now the program is open. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. In order to debug this, you want to you have to read the comments because otherwise you don't know what it wanted you to do. So look at the comments for each block. Is something scrolling across the screen at the end? Yes, it's got something across the screen. So this bug is this comment is okay. So we're going to delete that comment. Now the second block is showing the number five. We're gonna click on the comment. Yes, show the number five. So we know that's correct. So we can delete that comment. The next comment says with the pause should be a thousand seconds. And is that correct? No, it's not. So we're gonna delete that. We're gonna fix it, then delete it. So you don't forget how to fix it. We're gonna add a zero to make that a thousand. So a thousand milliseconds is really a second. We're gonna delete that comment. Next comment says, show the number four. It's correct, delete it. The next comment says it needs a thousand milliseconds. We're gonna fix it, add a zero and delete it. The next comment says number three, it's correct, delete it. The next comment says we need a thousand, oops, <laughs> add a zero to fix it and then delete it. The next comment says a number two, it's correct, delete it. The next comment says add a zero, make it a thousand, fix it, delete it. The next comment says show number one, it's correct, delete it. The next comment says it should be a thousand, so we're gonna add a zero to fix it and delete it. Now this is very special. Show the number zero. The comment says no, scroll the text, happy new year. So we're gonna pull out this bad block. That's our bug right here. And we're gonna to go to the basic toolbar and we're going to get something to scroll, show a string. A string is numbers or letters that are a word or meaning to a human, but not to a computer. So it's inside quotes. So the computer won't read it, it'll just display it. So we're gonna put the block in there and then we're gonna add happy new year instead of hello. Happy new year. Now our code is correct. We can throw that bad block away, that's the bug. Be sure and take a picture of your code because you're gonna put it in your notebook. So now I'm ready to put it in my notebook because I've debugged it and I can see on start, it says five, four, three, two, one. Notice it's waiting a second in between each one and it's showing the string Happy New Year. One more thing you need to do before you go is you need to click share and you need to publish your project. Then you need to copy your project so that you can put it in your notebook. So you took a screenshot of your code and you copied your code. So you're gonna go back to your notebook and you're gonna paste that right here. Remember shift control V. So there's the link to your actual code. So when Ms. Klein clicks on it, she can see your actual program. And then down here in our code chart, Ms. Klein has a picture of the of the buggy code when it still had the comments on it and the code you just fixed. So you're gonna put that screenshot you just took right here. And then you're gonna say, originally pauses are only a hundred milliseconds, sorry, not a thousand milliseconds. So that was wrong. So we put no and does not scroll happy new year. Or we can say shows zero and that's not correct so now pauses are a thousand milliseconds and it's and it shows happy new year at the, at the end and that is correct so we put yes so if you're wondering where i got this code with the with the comments on it if you forget this that's okay miss kind won't it's not a problem but you could go back to home and get that because you just import it again and you import dragonflies again, and it'll have a picture with the, you can get a screenshot with the comments there. So this is the buggy code. 
and that shows the mistakes. So we have both of those in our notebook now. This is the buggy code and this is the corrected code. <clears throat> so we're almost done. That's the whole lesson. It's very short. Here, describe a time when you've had to troubleshoot a problem and then tell us how you solved it. So you did it. Woo woo. Congratulations. You are done with lesson 1.4 and you got this.